But yeah, I wanted to show you guys this game. This is Forever Winter. Basically, you are someone just to, trying to survive a war zone. You are not on either side, and both sides seem to be not even paying attention to you. And basically, you are the smallest fish in a very big pond. Like, there are giant hulking mechs walking around going to battle here. Oh yeah, and the company's, uh, the studio's name is Fun Dog. So, here's the deal. These past few months, we've had an outpour of positive reception from you guys around what we're creating. I'm and glad. we really want to get that game out to you sooner. That's why we're diving right into early access on September 24th, 2024. Well, and guys. a heartfelt thank you to everyone who participated in the beta. The team has been rocking around the clock to incorporate a ton of the feedback you guys gave us. And we can't wait That's to really share the good to hear. Now, I don't believe anyone should have to pay more than 50 USD for a game. And if you okay. want to support the team above and beyond the initial price point, that is awesome. And we really appreciate it. There will be Dear a special God. edition with Oof. the game soundtrack and Jason's awesome tunes. But that should be your choice based yeah. on how much you guys take the game. So the Forever Winter is going to be $27 at early access. 27 Wow. Compared to some other games, that's not bad. There will honestly. be zero pay-to-win solutions. You will earn your gear via skill or luck, and you will not be able to buy your way into Nirvana. You will never that is great. Or be charged for a new character, because that's the way it should be when you buy a game. You will not be charged for maps, guns, additional quests, new bosses, and more. This is wonderful to hear. Especially in, unfortunately, the way the AAA industry is nowadays. That nickel and diming shit is for the birds. We will charge for skin packs, and any sales there will go to supporting the character team and allowing us to make even more baller characters in the future. Cool. Now, why do all this? I fondly remember a time growing up in the 90s when you could go to Comp USA and buy a box copy of Command & Conquer, Giant Citizen Kabuto, or kk &D oh. for 50 bucks or less. And be set for months. I'm really hoping wrong. we can get back there. I now, he's completely right. I hope one day in video gaming we're able to get back there. But basically, what's going to need to happen is I think the business tycoons and the business people, their gaming is going to die eventually. They're eventually going to get stale, and they're going to try to keep nickel and diming people, like uh, with subpar games. I mean, that's what originally killed the gaming industry back in... I don't remember the time period, but yeah, gaming almost died Out because the they were trying to put make people buy subpar products. We really respect what the homies did with Ready or Not. Having the balls to release gray box maps into their map lineup was incredible. So we're taking a page out of their book. We will give you one work-in-progress map early, so you guys can scope it out, have some fun, and hopefully give the team some super helpful feedback. So we can make them even more kick-ass when okay. they drop fully. Taking it one step further, we want the community to get a chance to vote on which bosses and which features we bring online first in our post-launch plan. Okay. Anyone who bought the game will get access to an exclusive channel in our Discord. There, you will be able to vote on what or who drops next. The art team and our brothers at Evolve 512 broke our backs to make sure we planned months in advance to give you guys the post-apocalyptic road trip you deserve. Yeah. And uh, indie games are honestly taking over, and everyone that just tries to repeat someone else's success will usually probably fail. Like, you have to do it better than what people originally are doing. The whole thing about Forever Winter is that you are a scavenger, and there is a huge war going on around you. Which is coming. It's impossible to stop it. We don't know how bad the video game crash is going to be, but the problem is they think it's always these dumb corporate people that think they can just have their numbers go up and up and up and do infinite growth. That's ain't, That ain't how it works. Eventually, those numbers go down. And they are deathly afraid if they see even an inch of that happening nowadays. Especially nowadays. And if the game does well, shit. We want to bring this art style to entirely new environments in the future. It's going to be a wild ride. I mean, Xbox bought uh, Activision and Blizzard and so many other companies, and they haven't produced anything 
very well from my knowledge. The only thing we got was uh, that sleeper hit, which was, God damn it, I can't remember its name, by G Tango Gameworks. And then they shut Yellow them down. Everything. Regardless Which was the of how many thing you play, could have done. you will always be able to play with your friends locally and via peer-to-peer -peer hosting. Nice. We learned from the nightmares some of our industry colleagues have gone through this past year. So that means no infinite loop matchmaking. By the way, I want to say this game is made by industry veterans. These are veterans that came together and made an indie studio. I just want to clarify about that. Game bugs. And no flooded servers where you can't jump into what you just bought. We did this so that no matter what happens, when you buy our game, you can jump in and rock and roll, even if it's solo. If you want to reach out to the dev team, hit up the Discord. There's a ton of homies in there that love Grimdark just as much as we do. This reminds me of like now in a more somber French note, Crusade. These past few months, we lost Spec Ops the Line, Project Boundary. And now they are shutting down the Battlefield 3 servers. Wait, Reality. they are? Fuck! That sucks ass! I love Battlefield 3! Yes. In the never-ending quest for profit, they are yeah. closing the gate on some really special games that inspired us. Games cost more now to develop than they ever have. Yeah. And that means risk mitigation is priority 1, 2, and 3. And remember, it's not their fault. They're a product of their environment. Yeah. And that's why this year has been so inspiring. To see other crews breaking out of that muck to bring the magic. One ammo belt at a time. He... he what, what else can I say? He's right. Other than he's right. Trying to big names going from... As I expect similar as... Yeah, that's unfortunately a thing, but I'm glad indie studios are breaking away and making being able to make their own games. Lastly, words cannot express how much we appreciate your support. People from all nations and all ages have reached out. Just to say, thanks for going there and handling the subject with the care and energy it deserves. This means we're not alone in hoping we see a new kill zone. A gritty battlefield. Yeah. Maybe a new Command and Conquer title that's not a bloody mobile game. But if the response to what we're building is any indicator, maybe they will find the guts to bring those games back the right way. Maybe, hopefully, but you know how people that have those are. For like eight years, yeah. You can really tell that he is a veteran in knowing about all this bullshit that goes on in gaming. Everyone is just, everyone is gaming and in entertainment are just so tired of seeing the same shit. We're tired of seeing the same shit over and over and over again and saying, Hey, get this battle pass now. Hey, buy this new thing. You know what I bought? I bought Gundam Breaker 4. You know why? Because it's like the other Gundam Breakers. But yeah, it, this kind of subject actually does make me angry, as you guys probably know. It's always the same shit over and over again. Because they're just trying to repeat someone else's success. Everyone either tries... It's not even Kata anymore. Kata has been doing that shit forever. And everyone's trying to make either a battle royale or... Trying to make the newest Overwatch clone or trying to create any of this. It just makes me angry because we had so many different ideas going into gaming. And we still can, but they don't want to do it. Like, look at Hi-Fi Rush. I finally remember his name. It's a rhythm-based hack and slash. Ubisoft literally just repeats the same shit over and over again with Assassin's Creed. That's all I've done for, like, the last 20 years. It's just so tiring, man. It's so fucking... And then... They just lay off a bunch of devs because they told them to make that shit. It's why I'm so happy to see new indie games. 
breaking out and making new stuff and making new things. But yeah, fighting games innovate at least. It's just, I'm glad to see an actual passionate indie team making something that reminds me of Battlefield 3. Because Battlefield 3, even with how janky it was, it was a good game. I spent so much time playing that with my friends. Battlefield 4 was a good game. Because you can tell they put love and time into it with DICE. Hell, Titanfall 2 was a good game. Too bad so many developers are in the fucking Apex mines now. In the Call of Duty mines. Oh yeah, I heard about that, Lynx. It's a... Dear God. I don't even know what this... I'm just glad Indie Studio, I, what I want to do, what I really want to do is if I'm able to get a good editor, is I want to review indie games for you guys, so you guys can make your choices and look at all these crazy indie games, something similar to what Seth does sometimes, is look at these crazy indie games and give them a breath of air and give them a chance, a better chance than some of these pieces of slop. They're just churned out by some suit who are like, the chart says we should make this kind of game. Which is unfortunately something almost every developer under EA has to deal with. Or under Activision. Dear God. I just... I just want better games. I want fun games where I'll play as a knight suddenly laying a crusade or play as... A ship captain having to fight off bandits. Or play as a super ninja leading a ninja clan or something. Or play a cool anime game where I'm shooting lightning from my hands for no reason. Or, I don't know, play as a Japanese yokai. Just, the most important thing about a game is it should be fun. That's number one, two, and three. Everything else should come second. Everything. That is the point of entertainment. To entertain. I know I'm going on a rant here. I know I am. It's just... I'm just so sick of it all. The reason why so many people are just playing older games now is because they're sick of trying to get nickel and dimed. Trying to pay for a new skin pack every, like, so often. <sighs> I'm sick of free-to-play games, honestly, at this point. So, yeah. Thank you all so much. Sorry about my rant. I'll see you guys later.